so today we're working on the r2 series excavator and it's due for a thousand hour service or i like to do everything a thousand hours so i'm doing everything on this you know oil fuel air hydraulic everything that's wet drive motors but there's a couple tips that i do want to share with you um, as far as servicing the hydraulic system and the cooling system that seems to be the two biggest questions i get asked is how do you drain the hydraulic oil and how do you drain the coolant out of these machines so that's exactly what we're going to look at today so first thing i do is if you notice all the cylinders are buried which means we call it hide the chrome i've got the angle blade pulled all the way in the boom down as far as i can get it the blade is up you know the arm is retracted the buckets retracted the thumb is retracted and that puts as much oil back into the reservoir as possible so when we suck it out or drain it out we get as much of that old oil out as possible now here's the drain hose for the hydraulics this is where we're going to drain the hydraulic oil from the reservoir up here. You can see I've already taken my blower and I've cleaned around this cap real good because we don't want any debris to fall down in here when I take the cap off. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and loosen this cap. You hear all that pressure coming off of there? It's because these hydraulic systems are pressurized systems. So I want to release that pressure before I remove any of my... Uh, either one of my filters or my drain plug here on the hose. You will find this hose tucked in down behind the valve body. It's kind of down in here. If you look for it, you'll see it, and then just route it up underneath the valve body and out to the side of the tractor. So the first thing I am gonna do is go ahead and drain the hydraulic oil. Now, I prefer to pump the oil out of the system, but um, you, know, you can do it either way. You can see I got my drain pan down here. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to my pump. And then I'm going to go ahead and loosen my cap up. And that's going to allow us to extract all that hydraulic oil. So while I've got the hydraulic oil pumping out, let's go ahead and talk about how to drain the coolant. You know, the radiator and everything's over here and I already took off my radiator cap. The machine wasn't hot. I just warmed it up a little bit enough to get the oil warm. And I just released the pressure on the radiator, kind of just like I did on the, um, the hydraulic tank. And if we follow our lines down here is our heater uh, control valve. So we're following one of the heater lines into the heater control valve. And right here is a connection. This is where we're going to uh, take this hose off and, and drain the, uh, the coolant. So what I like to do is use these hose pinch pliers. I use these all the time. And I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for the types of tools and stuff that I use. And what I do is I go ahead and pinch this hose off. And then I'm going to use my Forma funnel. These things are really awesome too. I'll leave a link for that as well. And because when I pull this hose off, some, some coolant is going to come out and I want it to come down in my drain pan, not into the uh, interior of the machine. And we just got a little spring clamp here that we're gonna take off. So that's not too bad. And then I'm gonna remove my hose pinch pliers. When I release the cap, you'll see the coolant really start coming out of here. Now that my coolant is done draining, we just simply put the heater hose back onto the heater control valve and put the clamp back into place. Now that I've got that heater line hooked up, what I want to go ahead and do is, you know, before I finish my hydraulics, so I'm going to go ahead and get some coolant going in this system. And that way I can put one gallon in there. We can allow that. Um, 
air to kind of start burping out and I'll I'll top this off a couple times while I'm doing the rest of the machine to make sure that we get it completely full all right I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my main hydraulic filter and my case drain filter which is right here but um, you can see that I've already got my form of funnel underneath this filter because even though we drain the tank sometimes the head here is going to hold some oil and it's going to leak down the uh, side of the filter just like that so we're going to catch it in our form of funnel drain it right down into our pan here All right, now I'm gonna put the new filter on dry, which means I'm not gonna put any oil inside of here. We wanna to try to avoid getting contamination in there, and that's why we're gonna put it on dry. I mean, hopefully I'm not boring you yet, because I am gonna go over how to bleed this system properly after putting the filters on dry. So stick with me, we'll get this, we'll, we'll get through this together. I, it's not, not too bad, just a couple tricks that not everybody, I guess, is aware of. So moving on to my case drain filter, what I like to do is just take the head off using a little 10 millimeter. Uh, we can take the whole filter head off and we can pull it outside the machine right over our drain pan. So I can pull this all the way out. And what I'm trying to do is prevent making a mess. You know, because if we took that filter off in there, we're gonna leak oil out of it into our frame and we don't wanna do that, so. little oil on the gasket. Always make sure your old gasket came off the filter head, of course. And we'll just spin on the new filter. notice I also didn't put in any oil in this filter either putting it on dry so now that we've got our hydraulic filters on here's the trick to bleeding the air out of the system this is a really good idea to to bleed the air out before we um, run it too much and get too much air into the pump there's a, um, a bleed valve up here or actually a hydraulic um, snap fitting that I understand that everybody's gonna have this connection but I am going to leave a link in the description I'm gonna actually sell this setup just so you can do this um, we'll just snap right onto that fitting on top of our cooler and as we put oil in here, that's going to allow the air to kind of push through the filters, push up through the cooler and start coming out the end of our hose. So right now I'm just going to put the hose up like this to let some air come out as I fill it up. And then when I start the machine, I'm actually going to put this hose back into the tank so that the oil will actually, you know, and the air and the oil will just go back into the top of the tank. So.
And just one more tip that I kind of want to go over real quick is how I drain the oil in this. Now I've, I've already drained the oil, but I want to show you the kind of the process I did. I got a little pushback on this, but let me see if I can explain it to you to where it makes sense. So before I started draining the oil, you can see right here in top of the filter, I actually punched a hole in the filter. And this is a tight system, which means as long as I leave the um, dipstick in and the oil fill cap on, as the oil is draining from the oil pan, it's actually pulling air through this hole here. It's pulling kind of a vacuum, or it would want to pull a vacuum if there wasn't a hole in the filter. So it's helping pulling that oil out of the filter down into the pan to drain out with the rest of the old oil. Now, the pushback I got was, well, we want to keep that dirty oil in the oil filter. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It really does. However, the Bobcat oil filters do not have an anti-drain back valve. It doesn't have that silicone rubber valve in there that keeps the oil from flowing back that you're used to seeing in most of your automotive filters and a lot of uh, heavy equipment filters as well. And that's just, I'm no engineer, but that's just how Bobcat does it. So if I were to spin this filter off 12 hours later, there's not going to be a drop of oil in it. That filter is going to be completely dry. In other words, Every time you shut the machine off, all that dirty oil is draining right back down into the oil pan anyways. So all I'm doing by putting a hole in the filter is just accelerating that process because it's a really tight area in here. And if you don't drain this filter, it's really hard to get all that dirty oil from pouring all down into your engine compartment. It's going to pull that pour down on your starter, all in the inside of the frame, all over the block. It's just going to get everywhere. Using this method, there won't be a drop of oil that comes out of it. And what I did is I punched that hole and drained the oil. That was the first thing I did before I started doing the coolant, the hydraulic system, the drive motors. Um, I just gave it enough time to completely empty so that we can spin it off without making a mess. So hopefully that makes sense. You can see I got that oil filter off and not one drop of oil went down that little funnel or down the block or anything. And to put that hole in the filter, what I do is just use a sharp punch. So I kind of broke off the handle there just so I could hammer it. And I just uh, hammer a small hole in the end of it like that. Do not use a drill. If you drill a hole, then you got metal shavings that are going to go down inside there. Using a punch, no metal shavings, nothing dislodges and goes down into the engine. So I've finished my service. We've done the hydraulic filters. We've put new hydraulic oil in it. You know, I've kind of put the machine together. I've done everything else. So I'm ready to start the machine now. And remember, I've got my bleed tube going right into the tank. So let's go ahead and fire the machine up and get the air bled out of the system. So that took a minute, you know, you can still see how the oil is kind of foamy. So I'm going to let that run for a minute or two and uh, clean out all that air out of the system. Now, although that's not a perfect process, that does get a lot of the air out of the system before we start operating the, um, the boom and other implements. So hopefully this video helped a little bit. I know a lot of these R2 series machines are starting to get up around that thousand hour service mark. and. Uh, like I said, that was the two biggest questions I got was how to do the hydraulic system and the coolant. You know, the final drives, the engine oil, everything else is pretty straightforward. But if you have any questions, please let me know, man. I do these videos for you to help you out. So at least give a thumbs up to the video or check out the Super Thinks down below. That would be awesome, man. It sure goes a long way to keep these videos coming out to you. Thanks for watching.